Item is this? Item D. Uh, item B, the closed session. No, D. 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 C. D. D. D is the agenda. This is the prior agenda or this agenda? On this agenda, item D. Thank you. Nope. Okay. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Moving on to item E, the consent calendar. Do I have to this presented? Second. All right. Any comments from the public? The consent calendar? Yes, I do. Stephen? Um, okay, so it looks like, once again, we don't have bills from uh, Bill Hansel. Um, and uh, so we don't know, once again, how much he's costing uh, the district. We should know that. It should be reported. <laughs> regularly even if he doesn't submit bills so we know i know later on the uh, manager will be uh, uh, talking about this but he's obviously running up a tab and uh, people have a right to know how much is being spent on our behalf for his services secondly there was a purchase of i believe eighty six hundred dollars for the uh, uh, for the the trailer it's a good piece of equipment but uh, I, as far as I know you didn't uh, follow proper bidding procedures by um, government bidding procedures by putting it out to bid um, perhaps the manager will refute this but um, as far as I know the what I've read is there's a four thousand dollar limit uh, to what you can purchase internally and everything after that goes to public bid it's something that i don't think it i've ever seen done here except with the uh, firehouse uh, kitchen which was not followed by procedure but i'm pointing this out because you're you're not following the law and uh, i would like uh, you to follow the law because uh, this is the public's money you're spending not your own that's all i have to say Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call a question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries unanimously. And we're going to move on to item F, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. And I just wanted to read out loud our uh, public decorum policy. And just as a reminder and refresh for all of us, public decorum. During any public comment before the full board, remarks shall be addressed to the board, not to individual directors or staff, and not to the audience. Prohibited actions. The following actions are prohibited during public meetings. Obscene, vulgar, or abusive language, shouting or yelling, use of electronic devices unless they are in silent mode. Disorderly conduct. The presiding officer shall, re shall order removed from the meeting room any person who commits the following acts in respect to a board meeting. One, disorderly, contemptuous, or insolent behavior toward the board or staff or any member thereof, tending to interrupt the due and orderly course of said meeting. Two, a breach of the peace, boisterous conduct or violent disturbances, tending to interrupt the due and orderly course of said meeting. Three, disobedience of any lawful order of the presiding officer, which shall include an order to be seated or to refrain from addressing the board. Four, any other interference with the due and orderly course of said meeting. Conduct enforcement. Any person removed from a meeting shall be excluded from further attendance at the meeting from which removed, unless permission to attend is granted upon motion adopted by a majority vote of the board. 
Such exclusion shall be performed by any law enforcement officers or security officers upon being so directed by the presiding officer. Any law enforcement officers or security officers at the meeting or whose services are commanded by the presiding officer shall carry out all orders and instructions giving, given by the presiding officer for the purpose of maintaining order and decorum at a public meeting. Law violations. In addition to performing the removal of any person who, in the opinion of the presiding officer, has violated the order and decorum of any meeting, the presiding officer may direct any law enforcement officer or officers to place such person under arrest for violation of Section 403 or Section 415 of the California Penal Code or any other applicable law and shall cause such person to be prosecuted. The complaint shall be signed by the presiding officer, the district manager, or the clerk of the meeting. Thank you for humoring me. Now we will move on to uh, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. Yes, I'd like to know if the district has received uh, information from LAFCO in regard to the North San Rafael study, or if they have requested information from Marinwood in connection with the North San Rafael study. I would have to direct that to staff. I do not know the answer to that one. I'm not allowed to direct it to staff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, is that Ron, you can call me tomorrow. I'm happy to talk to you about it. I beg your pardon? I said you can call me tomorrow. I'm happy to talk to you about it. Oh, OK. Can I call you Colette? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other um, public comments? Excuse me? Yes. I'm, uh, I took note of your veiled threat. Um, I have been threatened numerous times by this body. I was most recently threatened by the uh, Park and Recreation Commission with arrest for, I guess, saying things that they didn't like to hear. And um, I, I don't know what you were quoting from, but uh, we do have a thing called the First Amendment, and that is um, governs all of our behavior. I hope that you take heart to what that means. We are a democratic body so far, and that means you're being held to account to the law. We believe in the rule of law, and uh, we also believe in the First Amendment as well as the rest of the Constitution, it's a basis for the law, laws that we all live under. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make a comment. Um, just a comment. So for the residents of Mar Marinwood, I'd like to share that I've been volunteering to serve as an appointed Parks and Rec Commissioner for about five years. I am your uh, immediate past chair and current vice chair, and I serve at the pleasure of our board. For the last five years, as that I'm aware of, we've tried to be good stewards of our district and to our neighbors, but a very select few and super minority of our neighbors have made it their mission to make a mockery of our process, the rule of law, um, and order in our district. Our district stretches um, just back years before I moved here that had an able to behavior to the point of dysfunction, chaos, and now public threats, to the well-being and safety for those who work and volunteer in our district, and today this needs to be addressed. We need to take back the narrative and stop enabling the misinformation that's being disseminated into our community like a cancer. We need to, um, in a functional democracy, without the threat of repercussion to our safety, to ourselves, and to our family. So I'm asking the board to consider to allocate the necessary financial resources to protect our process and its citizens by A, installing two cameras in the meeting room, one facing the public and one facing the board and the commissioners. Two, enabling a live streaming of all public meetings. C, um, the achieving, uh, I'm sorry, the archiving of all recorded meetings unedited. Um, the goal is this, to take back the narrative and not allow others to edit and disseminate their own versions. Um, have a sheriff present at all board meetings and commission meetings for at least six months. Identify and institute a proper way to record and live stream public rec par parks and rec commission summer inspections as we tour the property. These points will allow me to feel safe to serve and be free from threat of repercussions. 
Um, due to a personal scheduling conflict, I will not be able to attend February's meeting, uh, which then should allow ample time for the board for the discussion and decisions to be made um, to address my concerns. So, thank you. Other comments from the public? Okay. Moving on, we will move on to item G, district matters. And the first item is the presentation of the fiscal year 2017 and 18 audit of financial statements. And we have Michael O'Connor. Would you like to take a foot? Thank you. Uh, I'm here to present the financial statements, and I work for CPA firm RJ McCarty, and obviously in charge auditor. Um, feel free to uh, interrupt me with questions at any time from the presentation. There, there are two reports. One is the basic financial statements and one is a management report. <clears throat> so I just want to go with the basic financial statements first. So on page one of the, uh, of the report is our audit opinion, which is on pages one and two. And it is a, uh, what's called an unmodified opinion. And there are no qualifications, there's no issues, everything is done in compliance with, uh, with standards. So this is the best opinion you can get. It will be on our letterhead and a lot of our contact information. We do work for the board. If the board ever have questions of me or, or CPA firm, you can contact us at any time. Next, I'd like to return to the Page eight. Page eight is the <clears throat> statement of net position. And this is a snapshot of uh, June 30, 2018. And <clears throat> it's basically, it, it's done on a full accrual basis, like you're a for-profit corporation. <clears throat> and it has your assets and liabilities and, and your net position, which is basically your assets, but less your, uh, less your liabilities. <clears throat> the district has a deficit of $5.2 million in that position. I just wanted to point that out. And on page eight, uh, nine is your statement of activities. <clears throat> this is also done on the full accrual basis. It starts with your expenditures. Uh, governments are in the business of providing services, so those are the costs. They're on the left side, they're the costs of the other services. Then it has fees that you charge for recreation programs, and then what's left over for the taxpayers to subsidize. So the fifth line from the bottom, you have a change in that position of about $530,000 positive. So you have excess of revenue over expenditures. There is a prior period adjustment um, <clears throat> for basically $5.7 million. There is a new GASB, a new accounting standard that came in that you have to now record your uh, post-employment retiree health benefits, the liability that's calculated by an outside actuarial firm on your financial statements. And that's what's the key thing that's put you in a deficit this year. And this prior period adjustment is the number that was a year ago that started the year. Uh, and so that gets put down on that statement. There is a note in the back of the financial statements that explains that. So on page 10, you have your balance sheet. This is what's done on a modified accrual basis. It's almost similar to a cash basis. In your general fund, the second line from the bottom, you have almost $2.6 million in fund balance available in the general fund. And then you have a measure eight fund with one hundred seventy-two thousand dollars available in that fund. Some people don't. A lot of people don't understand the full accrual basis, so this is a little more easier to understand having these modified accrual basis statements. The next page twelve is um, basically your similar to the statement of activities. It shows all your revenue and expenditures for the year. Um, so just the third line from the bottom, under general fund, you had an excess of almost $700,000 of revenue over expenditures in the general fund. And then measure A, you had $70,000 of revenue over expenditures. You had a debt service fund with the 
um, which is now gone, it was related to a, a bond or debt that you have that's been paid off during this fiscal year. That's all I wanted to point out on these financial statements. Okay. Uh, questions from the board? Okay. Um, you mentioned the um, 5.6 million prior period adjustment which relates to GASP 75. Right. Um, there is also a um, change in assumption um, that is listed on page 30 and 37 to the tune of roughly $2.5 million. Could you please um, tell us about that? Thirty-seven. Page page thirty is the first instance, um, which is in note eleven. Um, it relates to open, but um, it's it has a oh it's deferred inflows. The change in assumption the two point one seven five. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For, uh, two point four six five. It's two point four six five. It's on page thirty. That's note eleven still. So. Page thirty. <clears throat> Change in assumptions. Yeah, so these, these are actuarial uh, figures uh, for the change in assumptions, and these are just how actuarials calculate. So I'm not an actuary, so I'm not exactly sure how they come up with the change in assumptions, but obviously there are changes in whatever they were assuming in, in calculating this liability. They have 2.4 on their change in assumptions. There's a 2.4 figure here and then 2.1 on, on page 31. <clears throat> page 31. What was your question on 31? It's, it's the mysterious changes in assumptions that I wanted some light on. Oh, the 2 million one set? Huh? Yeah. Okay, so on the deferred inflows, I know what that is. That is. Um, when they calculate gains on investments and they allocate them over a period of years, they don't hit you in one year with gains or losses, so they're allocated out. So that's what this deferred inflows on. Oh, all right, so um, I'm still as fuzzy as I was before, but um, I'll move to, pay the, to well, question number. Can I help for a second? Yes, please. So what he's saying on page 31, the deferred inflows, that's coming basically because we have that open trust fund. So he's saying that that's it what you... It is directly related to it. Okay? Well, yes, and it's saying that that is what you can, uh, uh, again, to Michael's point, um, you know, over a period of 30-some-odd years based on that initial... 60,000 uh, and that being a low water mark for where to contribute on an annual basis. So all of these numbers come from the actuarial report that the that when the OPEB person Gary Klein came in and delivered that report. So these numbers come out of a different report that are then given from the actuary that are then given to the auditor to incorporate into our audited financials as well as into our uh, financial statements. But it seems like because of our policy of allocating at least $60,000 every year, we are starting to realize a decrease in Correct. our um, liability. Correct. Okay. So, thank you. Um, and then, um, question which might be more along your lines okay. then. Um, <clears throat> What is, there is um, such a thing as um, um, a benchmark for fund balance percentage, like uh, for the health of the organization to be able to kind of cover your annual expenses um, based on how much you have in your fund balance. Is there some kind of uh, Goldilocks number that um, institutions like ours should be looking for? Um, no, it's it's very subjective. If you want to have reserves, if you see things coming in the future, capital replacement, you know, you know with, the, with the with the buildings and improvements, you know, the parks and whatnot. If you see that coming, you can reserve money for those. So it has those issues in there. I mean, you have the issues with the you know the OPEB liability and and your also your pension plan liability. So those things that you can you know reserve money for, but as far as your operating budget on an annual basis, I mean, it, it yeah if you can afford it, it'd be great 
to build up a reserve of one year's operating budget for the district. Um, that's rare. It does happen. Um, but, I mean, you want at least three months for the operating expenditures um, in there, so you probably would want to have, <coughs> you know, 25, 30 percent minimum of your operating expenses in, in fund balance, but you obviously want to build up more than that. I mean, that would be the minimum. Thank you. So just like super high level executive summary, we are plus half a million dollars um, in terms of operating revenue, of operating um, profit, whatever. Oh, that position. Thank you. And um, our biggest issues are the OPEP. Mm -hmm. Right. And the pensions, yeah. But those, so those liabilities are not being payable for many years. Right. The district is making payments on that. Right. So they're you know they're making the payments on the year, they're paying all the bills. The future of those liabilities is not certain. I mean they could drop a lot. They, I don't see them going up. So but I mean, they could they could drop. Different changes could happen there. But um, so anyway, but they are way out in the future and the district is is making the payments on all those liabilities. So. I read something in the uh, report that indicated that the uh, discount rate was going to continue at 715. My understanding was that CalPERS was going to drop it to 7%. That's correct. That's what I've heard too. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, I also read in here, and I hope I didn't misinterpret, well, I hope I misinterpreted it, that the uh, safety contributions to pensions are now approaching 40% of the covered payroll. Okay. That's a little frightening. So one thing that's happening is PERS is raising, mm -hmm. you know, they are going up. And the district has been making the payments, but they may, will probably continue to raise them yes. in order to get the slide. Really bad. Yeah, because this is not only future indebtedness. This is cash payments that are going out the door every year and right. are increasing dramatically. So exactly. that is of concern. Thank you. Okay. Uh, questions down here? Good. Okay. Any questions? Michael, on page 32, that's basically our uh, P&L for the fiscal year, correct? Is that a very condensed version of it anyway? This, this is the budget tax form, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if you're looking just for the single fiscal year performance of revenue versus expenditure, that's the cleanest page to look at without getting confused by net positions and everything else. Correct. So, uh, yes, you made it excess of revenue over expenditure. Right. Because in net position, then we're also taking into account depreciations and gains and assets and everything else, not to mention all of the items that uh, they have just discussed between these long term liabilities. That's correct. Yeah. And then I also realized, did you want to talk about the board and management report, or is that? Just so in the management report, um, what we do in the uh, during the course of the audit, we looked at the district's controls over their assets and their safety audit guarding them against loss, mostly due to error and fraud. The only issue that we had in there was a payroll tax return reconciliation that the district is is working on. Completed, they file annual four quarterly payroll tax returns. It's reconciling those numbers to their general ledger and having a formal reconciliation for this. And that's something they're working on and implementing. So. There were two recommendations, I think, that were made in the second one. And I'm trying to get clear in my mind as to whether um, you and your firm agree that we have addressed the second issue about uh, policy and procedure or if we have work to do. Yes, uh, Eric has developed a lot of um, written procedures. So I think that that has been addressed. Yes. It has been addressed completely, i.e. you're not looking for desk procedures or something like that. You know, I think it, I think it has. Uh, I mean, there it's possible, it, it, possible, possible it could be added to it, but I mean, he's covered so much mm -hmm. at this point, so it, it's more than adequate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Any questions, comments from the public? Stephen? Um, yeah, well, first of all, I want to point out that I have not been distributed um, the copies of the uh, agenda packet as required um, by, I think, the law, uh, the Brown Act, for sure. Um, you're supposed to get it if you request it. 
And so I can't really follow along, so I'm going to just do a few things by memory. Um, there is a lot of, first of all, this is the, the highest deficit uh, that I can recall. Um, and I know a part of that is the OPED, well, the, the, the retirement liabilities. Um, and I have a, uh, a question which I'm just going to throw out there. Um, since 80 per, or 60 to 80 percent of our firefighters' uh, calls are uh, conducted in the city of San Rafael, how much is the city of San Rafael paying towards the retirement benefits of our firefighters? Now I know the answer to that, and I believe it's none. And um, wait, so Stephen, we're and, just talking about the finding the audited financial statements yeah. completely off topic. Well, I'm sorry, but you, I mean, I would love to talk numbers with you. The other thing so is... The agenda it, was posted online last week and copies can be mailed available in advance. So you're well, not, you're you know, you started this, the, you started, you started off by quoting, I, and I don't know what it was that you were quoting, but it sounded like law. And I'm asking you to simply follow the law. I agree to follow the law as well. Um, there are, uh, there's a lawsuit out there with some 90-year-old uh, people that have been Steven, here, which is also another. Uh, okay. No, Steven, I'm not. Actually, I'm talking about the budget, Leah. If no, you, this is not. Would you in please the budget. not interrupt this me and allow me to speak? Okay. Are you going to allow Steven, me to speak? Stephen, you are not. You're interrupting me. Okay, Stephen, we're done. Okay, we're moving on to the next item. Um, is there anything further from the board for our time? I thank you so much thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, just thank you to Michael and RJ. As always, they're very easy and nice to uh, work with and uh, are patient with me. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eric. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so moving on to item G2, we have our fiscal year 2018-19 second quarter P&L budget actuals report to review. And a lengthy introduction, I shouldn't say lengthy, introduction by Eric. Just a page. Just a page. Uh, is there anything that anybody had comments on, or did you want to go into it at all? Uh, the only thing I would say is the same thing that came up last time, just because this represents 50% of the year doesn't mean that spending or revenues across each category and account are at 50%. So ones where we had uh, larger <coughs> variances, especially ones that weren't explained previously, I had the variance report at the end. Um, I will say the variance report did cut off uh, in a print area at the very bottom. So you are missing uh, one note that I had added um, under fire for uh, what is account 522910 for capital improvements. Uh, the amount stated in the actuals actually includes the carryover from the kitchen project that was started last fiscal year. Uh, that total that was spent this fiscal year is 53,500 approximately. Uh, and then the remaining amount in that line is for the HVAC uh, replacement that was a budgeted plan project. Otherwise, yeah, questions? Mm -hmm. Any comments from the public? What item was that? We're on item G2. That's the manager's report? No. Financial year. The variance report. Okay. Uh, well, since I don't have the uh, document in front of me, I can't even make a, a comment on it. Um, I, uh, I hope that you review your policy uh, regarding uh, okay, so providing no, information no to the public. Excuse me again, you're so interrupting I, again, and I do believe that that's probably against uh, the Roberts rules or whatever okay. you were uh, calling we out earlier. On to, the, on to item G3, board bylaws amendment regarding format of public meeting minutes. <coughs> Does everyone have a chance to review? Yeah. Do I have a motion? Motion to accept as 
Um, I just would like to um, applaud Jeff for starting this, this initiative, and I think it will be lovely to um, have meeting minutes that are not only uh, easier to prepare for the board secretary, but also easier to reference and um, provide more efficient of a document for board or public to reference in the future. Um, I love the idea of um, no bias, basically just actions being reported and no room for interpretation. Um, and um, it will, it is, and it will be the official document um, for our meetings, um, according to Robert's rules. Um, even if um, there is a videotape or a recording of any uh, meeting uh, available to the public to see, the official document, um, the official document, will be the minutes. So the more objective, the better, I think. Oh, hard to do. It's about time. Yeah, the case look amazing. Uh, thank you. Anything else from the board? Any comments from the public? Stephen? Uh, yeah, I, first of all, I commend you because I think this is what minutes should uh, reflect is the actual action items. However, it's incomplete without a full recording of the uh, meeting. Now, you do have recordings. You do have audio recordings that are very small files, relatively speaking, which can be uh, stored and uploaded uh, to the site uh, for almost no cost. Um, I also love the idea of the uh, the videotape, uh, as presented by Shane Valentine, um, it's, you could imitate what the Ross Valley Sanitary District does and just basically turn on a videotape and you're done. You don't have to do much. And honestly, I'm not sure, sure that, well, I, I don't know if you need a secretary to the intendance to that because you're recording so little, but but leave that one alone. Um, I think uh, being objective is essential. Um, I did recall from uh, the minutes that were recorded last month, they're way off, they're biased, um, filled with all kinds of uh, inappropriate language, which is meant to bias the uh, interpretation of the meeting, and most especially with uh, the policy that you want to institute later on this evening, um, you need, we need, the public needs some kind of record of what's going on here. You're not a private body. I'm sorry, that's, you're a public body. So you need to be accountable. You need to be held accountable. That's it. Any other comments from the public? All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item G4, authorization to auction and salvage surplus vehicles. I have a motion. So moved. I'll second. Yeah, I'll second. Uh, discussion? No. On the, uh, the 95 Chevrolet light truck, was any of the work performed? No. Good. <laughs> Bad money after good. The chief's vehicle was really good yeah. money after that. What's that? The chief's vehicle was really... It's done. It's done. You have to fiddle with the, the ship load just to get it to start. It, uh, it's again, it, it was an agent vehicle when we took it on. It, uh, it needs much more work than it's possibly worth, and I wouldn't even send it to auction. So in other words, our former chief was in jeopardy of having it behind the wheel. It's one way to look at it. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, yeah, my recommendation is what I put on the memo is to uh, uh, send the park maintenance dump truck as well as the fire uh, utility truck off to auction. I do think there's some value to both of those vehicles in an auction setting. I don't think there's any value to the cheap vehicle, uh, and we have to pay some level of initial money to put it in an auction. So just, 
I think you're much better off donating it. Much like we did the old uh, park Chevy S10. Well, it's been depreciated to zero anyways. A long time ago. Yeah. So all, all of these like vehicles have a long yeah. time ago. Mm -hmm. When you say donation, it's basically for parts, right? Uh, yeah, well, I'm saying donation. Yeah, sure. You give it to people who take cars, whether they run or not. You make that no expense to us. Uh, otherwise, we're paying to dump it to a salvage yard or anything else. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will say uh, Caesar Correa, engineer, uh, fire engineer. I mean, he's gone through. He's stripped down the vehicles. Um, the majority of the safety gears go on. The radios are out. Things along those lines. He uh, he knows what he's doing there, and he's taking out the pieces that might have some level of future value to us. Otherwise, uh, at least on the fire side, so that they are uh, decommissioned to the yeah, best that they can be. Very good. Okay, any other questions, comments from the board? <clears throat> any comments from the public? Stephen? Some of you may know that I actually worked in this business. I worked at a nationwide auction company, and uh, they're no longer in business, but uh, first, uh, first Capital Auction is still in business uh, in Vallejo. And uh, they do sell salvage vehicles. So uh, they sell total vehicles. So I don't know why the determination is that there's no value. They do have value in an auction setting particularly, and um, I don't believe you're getting your highest to best use if you're not actually putting it out to bid. Who's going to own that vehicle? I certainly would like to know, but um, I don't know. I drive a 92 Ford, so I, you know, I guess I'm not a judge, but uh, but I, I look at the vehicle and I saw the chief drive it a few months ago. So I, I don't know what's happened in the meantime, but uh, even if it got into a uh, total uh, wreck, it still would have value. And uh, this is the advice your general manager is offering you, but uh, I think it's, you need to do some due diligence on your own. Thank you. Uh, any other public comments? Can I call the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Mm -hmm. Moving on to item G5, district manager report. There. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, again, you know, things are kind of listed there in writing, so I won't go through and read it. Not a lot on the park maintenance uh, facility, which still uh, hopefully gets some level of clarity. Uh, from the county as to which additional drawings documents they may want as part of their review. They've become pretty intimately familiar with this. Um, and so once we get that, we're just trying not to go through uh, and create documents that are not ultimately needed or warranted in what they are trying to do. Um, so we're working with them on that. The one thing I want to bring to the board's attention uh, upcoming in Napa, July 7th through 10th, is the Special District Leadership Foundation and their Leadership Academy. Uh, I attended this a while back, um, in my first month of being here. Uh, Director Naylor attended it during his first year. It is coming up. This conference is not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is incredibly informative. It is a uh, it's very good for board members. When I attended, I would say the split's probably 85-15 board versus the uh, staff that attended. It goes through all the modules that I have listed there. Um, uh, registration is relatively cheap. District's practice has always been for directors who attend trainings, the district covers the registration cost. Uh, travel lodging meals is on the responsibility of the director. Uh, with that said, I remember when Jeff went, and I believe we still have time, we were able to uh, get his entire registration fee scholarship, uh, plus through uh, both our workers' comp and our property liability insurance, we get credit incentives. This qualifies for a credit incentive, and uh, in short, the incentive we would get for one director is greater than the amount of the registration itself, and I believe that we can get up to two different credit incentive points for up to two different directors, so that would basically come back to us and cover the more than the cost of sending people to this. Um, so I highly recommend, if anybody's interested, 
uh, and attending, please talk to me. I'm happy to help you with all the registration, uh, get you information on scholarship, whatever that may be. Uh, on my other items of note, um, I'll skip to the second bullet point first. Um, obviously, we'll uh, starting with budget creation for next fiscal year. Um, those will be some of the bigger tasks that we'll be cranking out. I'll be working with uh, the loop with uh, Chief Gray, with our fire captains, and everybody else as we go through and look at what next fiscal year looks like. Uh, ideally, have a draft by the next board meeting, and I'll also kind of lay out a draft schedule at that time on when it'll be shown in public meeting settings all the way up to adoption. Um, and then there's another note about researching options and equipment needed to provide for video recording. Uh, all that equipment was actually purchased today, so I expect that to be in shortly. And Luke and I will work on getting it set up and mounted and run in here. Thank you. Any questions for Eric? Right. I'm also going to put in a plug. I think I'm going to go to the, um, the conference. So if there's anybody, any other districts who want to go, maybe you can try to carpool or something like that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, comments from the public? Stephen? Yes. So the report on the maintenance shed was insufficient. I, I mean, it was very vague. and I. You know, the public is very interested in what's going on. This would probably, if uh, your plan prevails, uh, it will uh, be the most expensive uh, capital investment we've made in, in decades. And um, so I think we need a little bit more fleshing out of what the problems are, how, how much we're spending on this, what changes have been made, I know the neighbor, uh, John Boros here, I know he's quite concerned, um, but um, you're really not providing us with information, and I, I only have to guess that it's intentional, um, but uh, uh, I'm asking you as a board to uh, be more mindful of your duties uh, to the public. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, just to follow up on that, um, I don't think the public's been completely notified about that other than people that show up here. So I'm not 100% sure what the Marinwood Review publication is. You get it quarterly, I believe, or twice a year, where you talk about your programs. But I believe you've talked about personnel and other goings on uh, in that, that piece of uh, literature that goes out to just about everybody in Marinwood. So that might be a good opportunity for you to let the public know what's going on, plus reasons in there, why you need that, what the budget's going to be, uh, the process, et cetera. So I would suggest you, know, you reach out to the community to be a little bit more, and I think that's a good way to start. Okay, thank you. Um, Do you have any more comment? Mm -hmm. It does actually clearly state here that the board approved scope of project and facility design has not changed. Thank you for the clarification. Um, moving on to item H, fire department matters. Uh, item one, draft minute of fire commission meetings of January 10th through February 5th. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, Chief, um, is there any problem with listing the shift roster? Okay, I'm, I'm just curious, I, um, over time I sort of forget who's on what shift and what their positions are, whether they're temporaries or they're acting. Um, that would be good, thank you. Um, so we have, a, we have an opening, obviously. And um, I believe we have an acting captain, is that correct, or have I missed? We have two individuals that have been serving. I see, okay. Both as captains, or one is an engineer and one is a captain? Both, the both have been acting as captain and training. Ah, I see, okay, fair enough, thank you. Um, I was very interested in the uh, the wildfire risk or the uh, fire safe or fire wise. Mm -hmm. um, do we actually, uh, I see that you're intending to hold a meeting sometime in March. Do we have a committee, or is this you entirely? 
The committee is being established. It is? Yes. I see. Do we have anybody from the Fire Commission that is volunteered to serve the on the committee? Fire Commission mem uh, members are interested in, in serving on the uh, committee. Yes, I see. Okay, very good. So that's moving forward. Terrific. Thank you. Yeah, I kind of kept plugging it. Were, you saying, were oh. we talking about the minutes or were you moving ahead? We were talking about minutes. Okay. Minutes. Okay, just want to double check. Any other, anything else on the minutes? Comments from the public on the minutes? Um, once again, I hadn't noticed anything different, so that's like, you know, congratulations, Chief Gray, again. Um, the only concern, uh, I guess concern, I, I know that uh, all through Marin, we're doing Fire Safe Marin, uh, and I, in the back of my mind, I'm a little concerned because, a little concerned about it because I know when, uh, the Mount Marin people found out that they had to take out the juniper bushes. It created a bit of a problem, and I'm just, I, I don't know, I guess you can't tell me what, what you have in mind. We want to be safe, but also I, I think uh, uh, we want to make sure it's safe everywhere. Um, I'm also quite concerned about the fire road uh, that was uh, is being converted to a, a bike trail that uh, we have adequate fire break up there. Are you uh, talking about the minutes, Stephen? I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I, once again, I don't have the packet in front right. of me, exactly. and so I'm operating from memory. And once again, you have interrupted me at, during my time to speak. Right, but we need to um, stay on so, topic. And so where are you in the minutes? Because I'm not seeing these in the minutes. Okay, so if you not... put me uh, in a position to follow the minutes that you have refused to provide me, obviously I can't stay to the minutes, okay? Um, my, my concern about the fire road is in general, I worried about the fire break, worried about the wildfire risk as everyone is in Marinwood, and uh, I look forward to the program in March and uh, anything we can do to keep our uh, community safer. I just would like to make sure that um, the board packet was posted online as prescribed by law 72 hours before the meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm assuming you have access to a website since you own one of yourself. So yeah, but that's not the law. Uh, um, I don't. I, I did. The law is that the minute the agenda packet is available for the public, and it was available for the public. The fact that you did not take okay. the time to review, I know. Right. So, okay. so the yeah. materials. That's a different story. All right. Moving on. Okay. So we're going to move on to item H. Let's see. Two expenditure authorization to replace fire department storage shed. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, apparently, there's not adequate storage in the firehouse to keep these items, so we need an external shed. Yes? Correct. Yes. Okay. What's the value of the items that are intended to be stored in the shed? Approximately. Ballpark. I mean, we have, you know, incredibly expensive items. Um, a generator was um, mentioned. Backup generator. I would probably defer that. I think I saw Captain So tell it back there. Like give a round number to the items that get the uh, items. You know, without having a complete inventory of I would say thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just to be clear, that's not the value of the items that are intended to be stored in the Lockable. It's well, yeah, it's lockable. Substantial. True, and it sits behind the fence in the yard of the. Well, I, I know firehouse. it sits there now. I'm just saying, what you intend to purchase is it going to be substantial and secure enough to store thirty thousand dollars worth of equipment? I, I, I think it'll be all right. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay. Item H. Any comments from the public, Stephen? Yeah, um, I want to commend uh, the fire department for their frugality and uh, getting a tough shed um, and storing equipment. The thought occurs to me uh, that if we bought a tough shed for the implements for the uh, 
for the parks department, we could save a whole bunch of money and then build, our, build a, uh, uh, a carport. Um, but anyhow, it's uh, good thinking and um, I'm glad that you're keeping things safe and dry and secure. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item H3, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Uh, good evening. In addition to the report provided, uh, I have to uh, say that I'm, again, extremely proud of uh, the progress we've made with the paramedic uh, service and an actual enhancement of our emergency medical technician uh, training. There's been some skills. Uh, advancement that's gone on. Our medical director's been providing assistance. We actually had a new nurse uh, educator start today, uh, Patrick, and uh, we hope that uh, those services will continue to benefit the community at large. Uh, we, uh, we know there's another storm en route, and it should be here shortly, uh, an atmospheric river, as it's being called. Uh, we could see four to five inches of rain. Uh, there's both a uh, wind advisory and a flash flood watch uh, between uh, 10 p.m. Uh, tonight and 10 a.m. on February 14th. Uh, so a combination of uh, wind, uh, the wind in, the, in this immediate area is expected to be upwards of 40 miles an hour plus. And uh, so there could be power outages in addition to that flood risk and the landslide because we've had some saturation based on the uh, precipitation we've received thus far. So I uh, suspect that the commute will be very challenging uh, tomorrow. We've been pushing out information, certainly the media has as well in, in terms of preparedness. Um, but uh, we'll be staffing an additional uh, utility with two firefighter paramedics that will be available to both San Rafael and, and Marinwood. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, some of the, the efforts that we've done in terms of advancement and clearing and activity clearance of drains and, and other things will, will help. But we're not sure, uh, nor are the meteorologists, where exactly the bullseye is going to be. The most recent information, in fact, before the meeting I, I received was that it will likely be north of us, uh, that we'll perceive the, the majority of the rain towards the home. But we'll have to just wait to see what, what happens there. There was a countywide briefing today, so everyone's working uh, together on this, and we'll just have to see see what occurs as well as that, and, and hopefully people will be mindful uh, with precautions and, and safety with that in mind, particularly when they're driving. Um, I did want to also mention that we do have a fire captain's um, vacancy, and uh, that uh, an announcement went out about the promotional process that there'll be an orientation uh, tomorrow morning uh, for the eligible candidates and uh, we expect to have an appointment uh, sometime in April uh, with, the, with the process. We also have a firefighter paramedic recruitment that's underway and that's being conducted jointly with San Rafael. Um, the application period uh, closed and we have about 61 applicants. So I think uh, that's beneficial uh, to the district, certainly. And we're also going to have an orientation uh, for all of those uh, firefighters that have applied uh, tomorrow evening. So that will take place at San Rafael City Hall uh, from 6.30 to 8.30 uh, tomorrow night. And um, certainly I'm available to answer any uh, additional questions that the board may have. Okay. Uh, questions? None for me. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the public? Stephen? Just, actually, I have a comment. I'm really thrilled that we have the best fire chief in all of Marin, perhaps all of Northern California. Yes, I'd just like to request uh, the chief's help for uh, County Service Area 13's effort to get the property at the county farm uh, weeds abated. There seems to be a uh, dispute between uh, parks and open space and public works and everybody else. They're more concerned uh, about the birds and uh, the mice 
than about the fire danger with 40 mile an hour winds coming down with this valley. We did learn from parks and open space that the nesting area of the birds ends the first week in August. So that excuse is eliminated for doing uh, weed abatement later on. And we'd like the support, CSA 13 would like the support of Marinwood and the city of San Rafael because with a 40 mile an hour wind, if, if there's any flame, it's going to take out uh, Appleberry and Idleberry in Marinwood with a 40 mile an hour wind. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other anything else on the board? Okay. Thank you. Item H4, date of next fire commission meeting is March 5th. Moving on to item I, park and recreation matters. We have the draft minutes of the park and recreation committee meeting on January 22nd. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? No. No. Questions or comments from the public? I'm, I'm sorry. The, the the board meeting? The Park and Recreation Commission minutes. Minutes, yes. Um, so I was there. May I speak? Yes, Stephen. Okay. So I was there and uh, Tiffany was there and there must have been two different meetings because a lot of information was uh, missing. Uh, specifically there was a reference to Shane Valentine saying that he felt threatened, but uh, the, the, it, was, it was just kind of vague and thrown out there. Um, I have made some specific uh, points that seem to have not been captured. Of course, I haven't captured on video. And so hopefully with this new video system that you have and uh, the, uh, the new reporting, we'll, we'll have more objective information. But uh, I really disagree with the way that that meeting was portrayed. So I would ask for specific changes, but I don't have the minutes. And they, they pack it in front of me, so I can't make specific points. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay, moving on to item H5, Park and Recreation Commission Bylaws Amendment regarding establishing a means of public communication to commission outside of public meeting setting. So we have a motion, can I have a motion? I'd like to move to approve as presented. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? Um, I just would like to um, make a short statement. I'd like to reiterate the fact that um, Park and Rec Commission is not an elected body, it's an appointed body, and it's an advisory body to the board of directors. And um, so the commission does abide by different rules than the board of directors. Phone numbers for all of the directors are published on our website as required by law. And I can't really picture a park and rec emergency where public needed to contact members of the commission outside of the meeting. Um, and um, the right person to contact is always the um, staff, uh, the district manager and um, he actually has the resources at his disposal to allocate the potential emergency. Thank you for that. Um, I'd just like to say that I think the intention of the um, paragraph that's presented here is valid, but I think the wording's a little, needs a little polishing, is all I'm saying. Um, I do believe that anything that's intended for either one of the commissions from the public should be uh, directed to the district manager or the district manager's designate. I think that's about as far as it needs to go. Do you propose an amendment to the proposed amendment? Well, I would I would simply simplify the language as I just stated, as opposed to what's in there right now. Um, in other words, in the bylaws, simply state that the um, any correspondence about non-emergency commission related topics be directed to the district manager or his designate. So you don't feel like we need to have 
the process of which that he will have what if that doesn't continue. Now. I don't, I can't hear you. What? I was just saying that you don't think that we need to have it written out so that the public knows that once Eric gets it, he will then forward it to commissioners. He doesn't commissioners necessarily have to forward it, but he can forward it, yes. I don't think we need to spell that out necessarily. Eric, also, you, back to your comment about emergencies. Emergencies are not something that would ever be um, would ever be directed to uh, commissioners. And in many instances, staff um, would be most applicable, other than the fact that um, staff is not necessarily on board during weekends or at nighttime. Um, any member of the public uses their common sense as to if there is an emergency situation with a call, for instance, 911. <coughs> Eric, yes, can I ask you if you think it is sufficient to not have the forward and said correspondence to the commission that, like, the last part of that sentence, you think that would be sufficient? Put a paragraph, a period after staff? Mm -hmm. or other designated staff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, and it states in plenty of other places that a commissioner may request an item be placed on a future meeting agenda for further discussion and consideration. I, so. Yes, that should be there, yeah. What's that? And that should be there, that last sentence should be in there, right? Uh, or it, it states it in several places throughout the bylaws that commissioners can request, but you can certainly leave it there. I don't think it hurts it, but I think, yeah, you can clean up that. <coughs> Kind of run-on sentence there. Uh, so it just anything? says correspondence from the public to the commissioner. Individual commissioners may be sent to the district manager or other designated staff. That's fine. Correspondence is a. I already scratched out the yes. Okay, good. There is no plural for correspondence. If you'd like to make a motion, you can vote for it. I'll, I'll second the amended motion. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Any other discussion from the board? Questions from or comments from the public, Stephen? Yeah, um, I sent a letter to Eric. Did he distribute it to all of you? Uh, do you have a copy of it that I can I read from? Um, you don't. Okay, so that actually kind of makes my point that uh, there is selective. Uh, uh, there's a bias in. Uh, sending all correspondence through Eric who may uh, have a conflict of interest to whatever is uh, being transacted on the uh, communication. Um, there are times when uh, you want to speak to a, uh, uh, a commissioner because there are policy issues. There's, there's a reason to have dialogue. Now as far as I know, uh, I don't think anywhere do they prohibit uh, public communication? Uh, that includes the county. Um, you can talk to planning directors. They do have to make record of that uh, communication. But uh, uh, there is no inherent right to squelch uh, uh, public speech. And uh, those of you who recall their civics, uh, the, the purpose of the First Amendment is, uh, in large part, to redress your government. And so this is what is being impacted here. I urge you not to go forward with this. I urge you to get uh, proper counsel on this. Um, you, I mean, it's just kind of like you keep pulling up the, the, the ladder. You, it seems like you don't want to be uh, contacted whatsoever and um, obviously the public does have an interest um, uh, this uh, shed is a perfect example of uh, closed door government and um, it's unacceptable and uh, there needs to be some accountability I don't know where we're going to get it but I'm certainly going to push for it at whatever level is necessary to make this a transparent responsible body. Is that a threat? Well, I guess that was what was called uh, in the uh, Park and Recreation Commission a threat, but uh, I can assure you 
that there are, you are not the final authority by writing bylaws. You're not writing laws. You're, you're writing uh, laws that, or your guidelines that you wish to operate under. But there is a higher authority beyond what you write. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right. Um, other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I. Okay, so that was unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next. Um, okay, so moving on to item I3, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. So in the absence of Luke being here, um, if anybody has any questions. Okay. okay. Questions? Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, the only thing that I was wondering, if with the latest storms and the new ones coming in, have we seen any more damage to the creek side, especially under the pool house? Uh, no, actually that area is holding up pretty good. The bigger issue is one of the things they had to deal with and actually wound up getting uh, uh, county uh, public works involved was uh, a lot of sediment buildup where uh, open space kind of concrete bead ditches eventually run into underground storm drains that go under the roads. We had one that was clogging up and backing up and they kind of were able to punch a minor hole through it at least to get the water through and then after a series of events of figuring out who the right people were, got County Public Works out there with some greater equipment and they wound up able to clear out all of the sediment that just builds and builds and builds. Yeah, you walk along those paths. I'm curious, do we know how many of those culverts that run under the whole bunch yeah yeah but and they go through i mean they always are going through and inspecting all of the culverts they do it before the rainy season they do it actually during big rains you'll see those guys out there and their slickers grabbing around in the truck and inspecting them all this one we got a call on saying that it was backing up and kind of start to overflow and create its own streams and they were able to get out there and get it minimally enough cleared in the meantime and then found, figured out the long-term solution so that's actually been fixed and cleared uh, otherwise no other major uh, activities you know okay. yeah cool anything else from the board comments from the public Stephen? yeah um so a number of things. Uh, first of all, the erosion is really bad out there next to the uh, maintenance shed. The last few years, uh, the, the staff has been allowed to drive over an area that was once grassy and, and uh, used as a recreation area. So this whole area now looks like a big, um, well, it looks like a construction pit. Um, if you go down uh, the, the, the uh, the panhandle there, you'll see uh, tire tracks uh, ripping up the turf. There's really no reason for it, and I, I just wonder, that, you know, who is establishing um, the the, uh, uh, the the criteria for trail maintenance? So uh, it's it's totally insufficient. We've got three full-time staff, and there's not that much. Uh, open space to take care of and it's not hard to do this but but uh, there seems to be no oversight the second thing is um, uh, this has to do with the Millers and and that erosion um, problem there uh, if it has not been addressed we need to make certain that uh, erosion control is uh, in place on the trails above the homes uh, this is vital. Obviously, we're finding out it costs a lot of money to settle lawsuits. Um, and third, uh, this is not a dig against any specific uh, worker that we have out there. I think they all do great work. But I happen to notice, I, I, I see them leaving at like 1.30, I saw one day, 2 o'clock. I don't know what their hours are, but uh, it seems like, you know, I don't even know who's who's overseeing this. Whether they they have any uh, 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 anyone to uh, answer to, but they certainly have the public to answer to. And uh, I just think this is a managerial issue that needs to be addressed. And um, it is the board's responsibility to make sure that that happens. Thank you. Okay. Any other 
right, moving on to item I-4, Data Thanks Park and Recreation Commission meeting, February 26th. Now on to item J, new and other business. Request for future meeting agenda items. Anyone from the board have anything? Comments from the public? Stephen? I would like to know how much is being spent uh, for your safety. Uh, I noticed that the, the sheriff's here, whether you're not your uh, consulting lawyer for imagined problems that you have here in the district, I would suggest that you actually listen to the public and try your earnest best to uh, follow the law because that's, a, that's all we have ever asked of you guys. We understand that you don't like some of the ideas that the public has, but uh, you do have, have a responsibility to the public to make your actions and your expenses known. And so I would like a future agenda item to be examining this policy, the cost to the district, and as well as um, other legal expenses like lawsuits, like the Millers, where, uh, you know, is this, is this something really that that uh, is in the best interest of our district. Thank you, and just a reminder that the agenda is set by the district manager and the board president. Moving on to item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. Isabel? I would like to um, thank Eric and Jeff for uh, their work on the um, action minutes as well as inform the board and staff that I will not be able to attend a meeting on July 6th. Plenty of notes. That's not sufficient. You should have mentioned that last meeting. <laughs> and I, I actually have, I will be out of town. My father-in-law is not doing so well, so I will not be here for the April 9th. And I have a family commitment actually on July 9th. Jeff? I have one. Um, I just, uh, this isn't strictly about um, Marinwood business, but um, since it's a board member item of interest, I'd like to call your attention to the admirable effort being made by two high school students in our community. Um, to gain support for recognizing the Poor Farm Graveyard, also known as County Farm. Mitchell Tanaka and Georgia Lee have done extensive research and created a short and award-winning documentary called The Silent Legacy. Um, I have links to both the YouTube that um, anyone can view to see what they have done and what um, they're trying to shed light on to get some sort of recognition of the fact that there are hundreds of grave sites out in that field um, just to the west of us. And also um, there is a change.org petition um, which you can sign up and um, make sure that this gets elevated to the right level. So something is done to actually um, put a perimeter or some sort of recognition um, to the fact that there are so many folks that are buried out there. Thank you. Can we put that up on the website? I'll supply that information to Tiffany. Yeah, that would be great. Just to satisfy my curiosity, where is it? It's that field just north of where Marinwood um, um, the Berries end. It's right okay. on Lucas Valley Road. Um, I think by, by the juvenile center out there? Right. I yeah. think Ron was talking about. Yeah, that, that, where it's overgrown? Exactly. That's what he wants. Any other board member items of interest? Okay, comments from the public? Well, I, I already made it, but I, I, love, I love what Jeff said, and I, I think that would really enrich our community to have that kind of information on our, our website. I realize I don't know where, whether you'd have to create a new section, you know, community news or something like that, but it certainly would be uh, a way to build appreciation uh, to our local community. Thank you. Uh, the date of our next regular meeting is March 12th. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. We'll see. No. Thank you. Yeah.